Good morning. It is, in fact, a beautiful morning. I'm sure most of you are aware of the time of year that we are in. We've actually officially entered winter. which sometimes here in Ohio can be pretty nasty. If any of you recall what it was like last year at this time, it was extremely cold and extremely snowy. But my understanding is this year we're going to have a very warm holiday. So, <clears throat> let it be what it is. You know, I take all the weather as it comes and act accordingly because yes, I for one am certainly not in control of it but all glory to God it will be what it is and uh, again uh, today I will be talking a little bit about exactly what time of year it is in one sense of the word um, Of course, it's a time when the vast majority of the world celebrates the birth of our Savior. And even in that, like just the Bible in general, Christianity in general, there is a great deal of controversy around that uh, celebration of his birth. And, uh, yeah. It's, it's all good, in my opinion. It's all, first of all, I'll just say right up front before I even pray and get into it, I believe it's okay. Now, well, let me let me save that for, for a moment later. But anyway, with that said, let's pray and we'll, we will get into it because I'm obviously biting at the bit to jump into this thing. So, again, all glory to God. And I, I pray that you're getting the, the notification and, and jumping on here, but uh, that's why I, I like to drag my feet a little bit until people do get that Facebook notification and, uh, and, and come on. So, with that said, let's pray and hopefully others will be joining us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this time. We pray, Father, that you be in complete control today, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that uh, the things said will be received with understanding today, Father, including myself. I pray, God, that as we celebrate the birth of your Son this time of year, Father God, that you understand that we do not choose to partake in, in much of the ungodliness that has has creeped in, and we are certainly are keeping Christ in Christmas. And just pray that you be glorified, magnified, and may we always be ready to serve and ready to listen and ready to be obedient. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Again, God bless you all. Uh, I, I'm going to try not to be too lengthy today. I do know that it is a busy time of year, but we must always take time for the Lord. So I'm not promising that I won't be two hours. <laughs> I, again, all glory to God. But of course, of course, others don't believe it. Others, you know, but yet they still celebrate it and they just leave Christ out of it, especially commercially. What, what this holiday has become to me is just appalling that it's about, uh, quite frankly, you know, we, we talk about Black Friday and when they first came up with that term, uh, it was determined after a few years that Black Friday was what kept many businesses afloat. And what, what is going on in on Black Friday is a great deal of, quote, Christmas shopping. 
website for celebrating Jesus' birthday and for gifts and what have you. My question is sometimes is like, so are you rebuking the shepherds and the wise men? Is that, is that, are you rebuking them? When you rebuke us for doing what they did, they obviously celebrated the birth of Christ and the wise men brought gifts as they were uh, called in the Bible. They brought gifts. And so when you judge me for celebrating the birth of my Savior, my question once again is, and yes, Merry Christmas, I'm Kathy. Exactly. It's like, are you rebuking these biblical figures? Are you saying they were wrong too? Now, with that said, I, you know, I want to I jump into this. And sometimes I feel a little like Moses uh, is not great with speech scriptures too. And uh, hopefully be led by the Holy Spirit to to help clarify things and maybe understand why the naysayers will not stop me from celebrating the birth of my Savior. So let, let me just delve into this commentary. And like I said, this is something where I did not reinvent the wheel. Like I said, you know, Moses begged for Aaron to speak for him and Today, I'm going to read a commentary that I cannot take credit for necessarily putting together. And quite frankly, I did scratch some of it out. But at the same time, it has some very good points that I want to get out there. Okay. It says, first of all, in order to, to, to determine if a holiday, short for holy day, or day you set apart as special, is sinful to observe or not, you need to ask yourself this key, key question. Am I somehow disrespecting or blaspheming against God by setting this day apart? Now, like I said, what those parts of us in that, the, as many put it, the paganistic traditions put into Christmas. <laughs> but, but ask yourself also, is it paganistic or isn't it? Uh, but the point being, if we're not blaspheming God, then it's okay. And we will see that coming out further. As this commentary goes on, it says, For example, if you set aside or make holy, your birthday is a day to open a present and eat cake. Does that in any way adversely affect your relationship with God? Well, obviously, no. You know, I I don't know about you, but on my birthday, I thank God that I made it to another one. You get to be my age, and you appreciate them much more, quite frankly. Okay. But if you set aside a, a special day where every year you cheat on your taxes or worship a pagan god, then you have a problem. I would throw out Halloween. I'm not going to go down that path, but I was, you know, it's, there is nothing holy about that day. Okay. Then, and, and like, again, it says, if you Gentile Christians alike has special days on their calendar, just as we do. Paul makes it a point to say that even though Christians who are Jew and Gentile both came out of very different cultures, they now belong to the same spiritual body. And though they may continue to make certain days special, they are not necessarily harming the body of Christ in doing so. Uh, the message in Romans 14 where Paul tells us not to attack the brother who chooses to set one day above another. It says, one man esteemeth, this is the scripture itself, Romans 14.5, one man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. And, you know, my point to that would be, we should be celebrating Christ every day. So to tell me I shouldn't do it one day, it's like, get over yourself. I'm celebrating Christ 365, 
And one of those happens to fall on Christmas. What we commonly refer to as Christmas Day. I celebrated him yesterday. I celebrated him today. In scripture. And from there, you know, we pray and, and study. And, and so we are honoring Christ every day. And you're going to tell me I can't do it on December 25th? I forget you. Okay, but anyway, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So it's okay. As long as you're not offending Christ or going against, against his teachings or, or, or basically being ungodly about it, who am I to judge you for what you celebrate? And who are you to judge me for what I celebrate? This, that's, that's the one main point. <clears throat> but let's read on. It says, <clears throat> and someone might reply, but wait, isn't that the verse? Isn't that verse in the context of Jewish holy days? And weren't those Jewish holy days actually holy? Isn't that different from a day we just invented out of thin air? That's someone asking that question. It says, well, okay, yes, Paul's very likely talking about Jewish holy days, but that's beside the point. It doesn't matter. The, those Jewish holidays weren't holy anymore. They were just days on a calendar. They were, by the time of Paul, Apostle Paul's writing, there was no more authority from God for the observance of, of the Jewish holidays, but there was still nothing wrong with celebrating the Exodus, which Paul continued to do even after becoming a Christian. He's cold in this room, by the way. He also did not berate Gentile brethren who did not celebrate Passover, nor did he demand Jewish Christians continue celebrating it. And, you know, that's, that's another age-old question that's been debated for quite some time, is many of those holidays, but I'm not, again, I'm not going down that path this morning. Another question. Okay, but we, but we can't just make a religious themed holiday up and think God will be okay with it, with that. That was a question. Yes, we can, assuming we are honoring God when we do it. Hanukkah was a religious themed holiday that the Jews made up. Are you hearing that? Okay. God didn't give them that one like he did Passover or Pentecost and the others. The Jews created that one in 165 B.C. And you know what? Jesus celebrated it. Jesus marked Hanukkah on his calendar. Jesus went to the temple to partake in the holiday. You can read that in John 10.22. What Jesus would not have done is take part in a holiday that celebrated something ungodly. And it's like I look at Christmas, it's like I'm not just celebrating his birthday, I am celebrating him. I did that yesterday. I do it today. And you're telling me I can't do it one day a year? Seriously? I mean, it's just, it just blows my mind what some people... And it's like, again, when you say I shouldn't do this, in my mind, you are rebuking the shepherds that showed up at the stable and the wise men that showed up at, at Bethlehem at Jesus' home with gifts. Most biblical scholars uh, agree to somewhere in the two years after his birth... That's why I don't, you know, that's why pet peeve of mine is major scenes with the wise men there. They weren't there, okay? They showed up a couple years later in Bethlehem. But the point being, they were still celebrating Christ and bringing gifts. So, anyway, where was I? <clears throat> Jesus went to the temple to partake in the holiday. What Jesus would not have done is to you know, celebrate something in God. Okay. You know what is godly? 
the birth. Creating a holiday to celebrate the birth of Jesus is not wrong. Nor is celebrating that birth on December 25th. Some of you heard me say last week, and maybe a couple other times recently, common logic or common study indicates that Jesus was probably born in September. And I count back, and that brings me to December, nine months. God considers life at conception. So maybe to God, Jesus was born when the Holy Spirit impregnated Mary. That's when life begins in God's... I'm not telling you, that one I studied out very thoroughly many years ago. God considers life at conception. Actually, he considered it long before that because he knew long before. Okay? And so, maybe, you know, Jesus was born this time of year. We should be thankful and celebratory of Jesus' birth. Here it is, people. I just said this already, but I'm going to read it again. Every day of the year. But esteeming one of those days above another to be a little extra celebratory is A-OK -okay according to the inspired Apostle. Okay? Apostle Paul. A man that wrote between half and two-thirds of the New Testament. If he okayed it, and we believe he went to heaven, we consider him, you know, I mean, he was one of the, he was the greatest New Testament writer of the gospel, of, of the Bible. Now, if he didn't see anything wrong with it, how are you going to sit there and judge me for it? But whatever. There is no command compelling us to celebrate Jesus' birth, baptism, or any other event. You're not required to celebrate those events because there is no New Testament command for them, either by command or implication. Well, I kind of dispute the implication part myself. We should be celebrating Jesus. The wise men did, or the magi, as they were called. They were supposedly uh, wealthy men. That's indicated also by the gifts that they brought. And there's a whole story behind those gifts and why they're specific ones. Again, I'm not going down that path today. That's not, that's for another day. Frank, maybe that's something you'd like to look up and study on your own. Why those specific gifts? Gold, frankincense, and mirth. Why those? Each one of them, quite frankly, have a meaning. But again, let me stop myself before I get too far down the hour. Okay? But know also that you are not forbidden from lifting up those days above other days because there is no New Testament pro prohibition against doing so, either by command or implication. If you want to make the day of your birth special, do it. Just give God the glory for that day. He gave you life. That's exactly what I said. Well, it's been about a uh, wow, month ago today. I didn't even realize that. You know, I rolled over 75. Praise God. And you're going to tell me I can't celebrate that in the fact that giving God for glory that he's allowed me to see 75 years here on earth? Smack, smack. I'm going, to, I'm going to celebrate it anyway. Whether you like it or not. Okay. If you want to make Christmas Day special, go for it. Whether that, no, I see this I don't agree with. It means, yeah, I won't even, I'm not even going to read that. Okay. We, we know Jesus maybe wasn't born on December 25th. He may very possibly could have been conceived this time of year. 
Okay. But there is no spiritually appointed day, nothing in the Bible that would indicate this this type of year, or tomorrow, shall we say, okay? So, there's nothing wrong biblically. You just kind of put that aside and you say, does it disrespect God to pick out a day where you reflect, in particular, on the coming of the newborn king? Does it disrespect God? Do you think God does not want us to celebrate the birth of his son? The one he sent here for us to have salvation? For us to be able to go to heaven where God wanted us? For us to be able to have the opportunity that none should perish? That's God's will. Do you think that God would be mad at us for celebrating the one he sent here to give us that opportunity? You're going to have to do a lot of convincing to get me to believe that. You know, if you choose not to celebrate it, that's okay. That's, that's fine. As long as you're celebrating Jesus every day, 365 days a year, and He is your Lord and Savior, then I'm okay with that. You know, in September, so would He not have been conceived in December? And, and I, I like that. I like that thought. And... Again, I I have questioned people so many times. Why would you condemn me for celebrating Jesus? <laughs> I, I mean, it brings me to tears to think there are people that believe that. I saw, I saw one uh, thing on Facebook here recently where they were using some scriptures in Ecclesiastes of a man that was tor terribly tormented, took the scriptures completely out of context and said that the day of your death is better than the day of your life. Well, in all reality, yeah, if you know where you're going, it is. You know, Paul even spoke, spoke to that uh, at one point where he said, for him to die was gain. It was gain for him. But it was better for those he was ministering to if he stayed. So I feel right now it's better for me to stay. Because God is still using me as much as I will allow him. And I try to stay completely out of his way and let him use me. I'm not blowing my horn. I'm simply saying I'm a vessel. Okay. So I would not disagree in it. But when you read that Ecclesiastes scripture in context, this was a tormented man saying that. And you're going to use that to tell me that, well, anyway. Again, let me not get too far deep into that. I, I wanted to jump over really quickly, and, and also, and I have, this scripture applies to far more than just than just Christmas. But if you if you want to follow in in your Bible, we're going to Colossians chapter two, and you won't have to go too far down because I'm going to start in verse four. I love this online Bible. I I don't recall the name or the. Uh, actual name of the app, but it is a New King James Bible, and it has, I don't, well, I don't know, I doubt if you can see it, but I'll try. It has the scripture, and it has references under it where you can see uh, related scripture. I'm not going to go to all of them, so don't panic. <laughs> With per per persuasive words. Well, I got that out. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. And this is Paul 
writing to the people in Colossians. Okay. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Beware lest any cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. I'm telling you, that's what I see going on today. It is, uh, well, should deceive you with pervasive words. Though I'm, see, I, I keep losing my place. Anyway, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. That's the most important thing. When I, when I read that scripture, this is what I hear in my mind, in my spirit. 24-7, 365. Abounding in him. Every day. You know, another great thing I love about this time of year, it's a great time to tell people about Jesus because they are aware. Even the people that do not acknowledge him know why. December 25th is marked on the calendar. They may be partaking of the, of the paganistic portions of it, but still their awareness is heightened. And quite frankly, there are more people are more willing to listen. More people even go to church. Churches will be filled tonight with, with candlelight services to me to present Jesus. Beware, at least anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. I, I feel like we covered that a great deal already today. If it's not of Christ, don't, don't do it. You know, nowhere in the Bible is Halloween mentioned. You will never see me participating in that. I, I can't even call it a holiday because holiday is short for holy day and there's nothing holy about it. Okay. In him you were also circum circumcised with the circumcision cision made without flesh. And this is not talking, you know, what circumcision is in the flesh. Okay. Why was it done on the eighth day? God gave that command. Why did God give that command? Because there is a, a they call it vitamin K, but it's a clotting um part in the blood that is greatest in a male on the eighth day after birth. It'll be the, in his entire life, whatever that, that chemical makeup is, it is highest on the eighth day. Man discovered that a few hundred years or whatever ago. God knew it thousands of years ago. That's why he said on the, but again, another rabbit path. I'm not, I don't want to go too far down today. Okay. Without hands, putting off the body of the sins of the flesh, you were, by the circumcision of Christ, and you tell me I shouldn't celebrate him? <laughs> anyway, let me move on. Verse 12, I'm going to get to where I want to get to here in a moment, but I felt like the rest of this was important as well. And you, being dead in your trespasses, in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. All. You know what that means in the Greek? You got it. All. <laughs> I know, that's an old one, but I still like it. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against you. We don't have to sacrifice goats in the backyard anymore. To simply be okay for another year. Or to our next sin. No. 
he knew you was going to he knew you were going to sin next week his blood covered it which was contrary to us and he has taken it out of the way having nailed it to the cross when Jesus Christ went to that cross it was a done deal and you tell me I can't celebrate him <laughs> stop me having disarmed principalities and power he made a public spectacle of them okay verse 16 so let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. And you tell me I shouldn't celebrate him. <laughs> I, I just, I don't understand. I'm sorry, but I see nothing that tells me I should not celebrate my Savior, and I will do so until the day I hear him stand before me and tell me to stop or I hear, well done, good and faithful servant, when he calls me home. I do not believe he will ever stand before me and tell me to stop. And so that means I'll be celebrating Jesus Christ 24-7, 365, until he says, come on home. And looks at me and says, well done, good and faithful servant. Till then, don't you get in my way, because I'm going to celebrate Jesus. Just give me a minute. I just his presence just hit me like a ton of brick. Thank you, Father. Thank you, my God. I am pleased with you. Celebrate me in the light of presenting me to those around you. Your celebration should be to make a people aware of what I did for them. My word says that I will come back when the gospel has been preached around the world. So celebrate me to promote me to the world. I can't top that, so I'm going to pray again. If you don't know Jesus, there's no, and there's no better time than now. If he is not your Lord and Savior, if you have not confessed him as Lord and Savior, the day of, today is the day of salvation. If you really want to honor him, if you really want to celebrate him, and you have not given your life to him, let's do it right now. If that's you, I simply repeat this very simple prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you as sinner ask that you forgive me for all of my sins and mold me. Graft me in as your trial. In Jesus' name, amen. If that was you, tell somebody and get into some good biblical place teaching and glorify the Lord. Celebrate Jesus today and tomorrow. All right. 
With that, I will let you go. I know another thing I know about this time of year, it is a very busy time. And so let's get on with it. But again, don't forget the reason for the season. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, Father God, for your son. We thank you that you sent him as a child that he experienced and was tempted in every way that we would ever be tempted, and he made a way out of that. If we would just acknowledge and follow him and, and listen to him and, and read your word and, and understand your teachings, that you have made a way out of everything. And, and Lord, we just ask that we can celebrate your son every day, not just his birth, but the life he lived. Amen. Again, God bless you all. Yes, Karen, I love that. Uh, Merry Christmas. Again, we love you. You cannot do anything about it. Again, uh, we will be in Ephesians.